This is the next Bite of Life podcast, the place to be to hear personal stories from expats, digital nomads, and everybody else taking their next bite of life. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Next Bite of Life podcast. My name is Kem Kemp. My guest today is David McNeil from Expat Empire. Hi, David. How are you today? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Oh, thank you for coming. I was so happy to like connect with you and because you're living in one of my dream cities right now. But before we get to that, you know, tell everybody where it is and then we'll go back a little bit and then we'll come back to where you are. Okay, sure. So I'm originally from the U.S., but right now I'm living in Porto, Portugal, where I've been for the last year. I moved here on November 5th, I believe, uh, 2019. Yeah, so really is a, a year, like right yeah. down the wire there. Now, exactly. where, have, where were you before you came to Porto? Right before I moved here, I was living in Berlin for three years, and then to move back uh, two years in Tokyo, and then before that I was in San Francisco. So that I made the move abroad, sort of, let's say, quote-unquote, permanent move abroad, at least as far as I can tell or know at this point, in 2014. Ah, so you really are what I like to call a rolling stone, like somebody who just goes, you know, (laughs) did you always, you know, want to travel? Was that always in your blood, so to speak? Uh, I would like to say yes. Uh, Of course, it's hard to know exactly where (laughs) these things come from, right? You know, it's, um, but I would say, so first of all, I moved around a lot as as a kid growing up for parents' jobs and things like that. Not in the military or anything, but just for my mom's job and my dad's job and so on. So originally from California, but have lived, like when I was really young in Illinois, um, lived many years, sort of my growing up years, I guess you could say in Alabama, where my dad's family's from, and then spent Los Angeles uh, for my high school kind of time, which was from, I guess, eighth grade to 12th grade. When I graduated, I went to University of Texas at Austin for four years and uh, studied abroad while I was there in Singapore. Uh, wow. You know, so I, I've had, yeah, then I moved to North Carolina for my first job, transferred to the San Francisco office. So I think it comes from that kind of always changing the location, always moving and uh, being able to realize that you can pick up your life, start it somewhere new and not have that many steps back. In fact, it's an exciting adventure. So I always saw it as an adventure. And also we had some great travel experiences growing up as well. We went on you know, uh, one or two cruises. We, we went to Costa Rica, for example, did a trip around Europe for a couple of weeks. We did uh, Mexico. So not, not all the time. And of course, not everyone has that luxury. So I feel very fortunate for that. But I think between those different experiences, it was just, wow, the world's really big. There's so much to explore. And how can I make that happen in my own way? And yeah, that's how I've kind of tried to drive the last few years of my life. That's amazing because, you know, travel really does open your mind to how the other half lives, how things are outside of your own little sphere, and when you've done it so much. And I love what you said about knowing that you can always make something happen and you don't always have to be stuck. If you have the urge to do it, you can always do it. That's something I like to impress upon people because people who are thinking of moving, it's always like, oh my God, what if I move and I don't like it? Well, you can either go back or you can go somewhere else. I mean, I'm a perfect example of that. You know, I left for Malta and we thought that was going to be it. But after a few months, we're like, you know what? This is not it. Then we went to Malaga. Mm. It's like, you know, what? this isn't it either. Then it's right. I'm like, this isn't it either. And then we came here to Valencia and then you find your space. So right. you're not locked in to something. So you don't always have to feel like you're failing at something if you don't get along with the place that you're going to. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Now, you lived in Berlin. We'll we'll go back to San Francisco. You you were transferred to San Francisco and you you loved it there. Did you ever think, you know, I could live here forever? Did you ever come to that point or was it just, okay, it was another place that you lived in? It's a great question because even in the two years, I guess, let me think. Yeah, I think overall I was there just about two years. Um, with, so even in that two year time, I thought, my, you know, my, my opinion changed drastically. So at first I thought, okay, I'd been living for two years in Charlotte, North Carolina before that. And I visited San Francisco. Um, I had, 
I guess I traveled to San Francisco before, but not really thought about it as a place to live or really considered it. And then I went uh, to a couple of cities, including San Francisco, as where is the next spot? And uh, that was the one that really stuck out to me, especially working at tech companies and uh, or wanting to at that time anyway. So I moved out with my company and I thought at first I was pinching myself every day. Like this yeah, place is amazing. I wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I just thought, man, like there's so much to explore. There's so much going on. I was walking all the time. I mean, of course, taking some transportation here and there, but I was just walking the city and just trying to understand the streets and that feel for me, it's just that deep, that deep desire, that deep longing for wanderlust, you know, and I think probably you and, and a lot of your um, listeners have the same thing. So for me, I thought, okay, I don't need to go outside the U.S. There are places to explore here in the U.S. Definitely. Let me move, you know, San Francisco is one of them. Let's do this. And then after the first year, which tends to happen to me a lot, after the first year, you're starting to re see the same festivals, the same events, yeah. <laughs> you know the city much better, you realize it's smaller than you first yes. thought, <laughs> you know, square miles, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you kind of think, wow, this place is huge. And there is a lot to explore. But after a year of solid effort of going out every weekend of, you know, just once again, like pounding the <clears throat> excuse me, pounding the pavement, then you, um, you know, you, you start to see the same spots and everything becomes a bit more, you know, uh, recognizable. And while I was working, I changed companies. So I moved to my first job to tech companies as a product manager. And I had the opportunity to go to Beijing for three months. And so that was even during this, you know, two-year period that I talked about. And I came back and I thought, okay, Beijing is a spot to be. And, you know, I want to be abroad. Let's do yeah. this. <laughs> and uh, it didn't end up working out. I got laid off from the job, unfortunately, shortly after for reasons I still don't fully grasp. But, you know, you move on with life, as you say. Exactly. And um, then, I, then I did a two months, nine week trip around, uh, I think 19 cities in Europe wow. and I was going on trains all around. So this is all part of those two years that I say I was in San Francisco, which I guess is te legally technically true, but <laughs> I still was, you know, while I thought at first this place is maybe the place I want to be, I, fi I found the spot that I can be for a while. I realized that I still wanted to be abroad and outside of the United States. And I think that's kind of what led me to the next place and then the next place and the next, next place. place. So um, I think it's a, I think it's great to experience more of the United States, but there for a number of people, there's probably that deep seed of like, yes. okay, but this is still the U S you know, exactly. So. There was something else outside of that. Now, right. how did Berlin get into the picture? I mean, we're going to compare the cost of living in both places or even three yeah. places actually. So San Francisco, we know is super expensive. Oh yeah. When you, how, <laughs> how did Berlin come into your life? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I had been I had been doing sort of two uh, up to that point two years in Tokyo, and I kind of wrapped up my time there by the job. Sort of either I had the opportunity to move back to the U.S., which was not in the cards for me, or <laughs> try to find something else in Japan. And I was having trouble finding that next product manager role. And so with Berlin, it became a situation of this is an opportunity to go to another country, especially in Europe, where I can do that much more traveling. Mm -hmm. and uh, be able to work in an English-speaking environment. And uh, it was a really cool city that stuck out to me in my mind on my, my nine-week trip around Europe before I moved to Japan. So I reached out to my network, and I, of course, looked on LinkedIn, other websites as well, and just started applying to jobs to think, once again, you know, let's see what happens. And, <laughs> and as you said, if I, if I hate it, which yeah. is how I felt about every place, it's exactly. like, if I hate it, then I can move on to the next spot. So... I started applying and I was fortunate enough to get an offer from what ultimately was the first company I applied to in Berlin. And wow. this is after, you know, a long time of trying to find yeah. my next job in Japan. So I thought this is the answer. This is the sign that I needed. And that's how I ended up moving there in 2016. Oh, wow. That sounds incredible. So when you got there, did you already have a place to live? Because we were, you know, that was one of the places that we had thought about moving to. And we right. went there for a few weeks trying to find a place. And that was when I found out about your cold price and your warm price for the apartment. And, you know, everybody's like, 
oh, Berlin is so cheap. It's, it's so cheap. So we're like, oh, right. let's see how cheap this is. But by the time you add everything up, it was really expensive. So we kind of knocked that out along with the cold. How did you yes. find the cost yes. of living there? <laughs> yeah. Along with the cold, exactly. Along um, with the cold. <laughs> I've got yeah. old bones and I'm yeah. right in- <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, Rick, I mean, bones included, I'm sure that plays a big role, but in general, I'm a big fan of warmer weather. So I totally, totally understand you. And if you can have the opportunity to live in that environment, then by all means. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I think you start to discover in Berlin that not only is it not as cheap as people say, and I think there, just to make a point of it, I think there's a, sometimes with some cities and some, maybe some countries, there's an overarching kind of opinion or view about the co- the price of living there. And I think Berlin is one of those that still has this impression of being very cheap despite, yes. and may- maybe that also contributes to the fact that the prices are going up so fast because everybody thinks it's cheap. And well, it just kind of, you know, <laughs> so, sort of perpetuates, unfortunately, in the opposite direction. And on the other hand, I would compare it to Tokyo where everyone says it's so, so expensive. And I really believe that it is as a tourist because you have to pay for a very small hotel room every night and it adds up. But on the other hand, if you live there, I'm not saying that it's dirt cheap, but on the other hand, I I felt like the cost of living, and once again, outside of rent, which is probably a theme that we'll get to in this conversation, Mm -hmm. outside of rent, the, you know, a great bowl of ramen was 800 euro. So, you know, like $7 or whatever that equates to now. Or, you know, uh, sushi being, um, you could find it on some of those conveyor belt type places that maybe it's not the highest in spot, but you're going to pay 10, 15 bucks and get absolutely stuffed. So I, I, felt, um, I felt like sometimes those ideas of whether a place is cheap or expensive, how, you know, how, how much it is to live there can be outdated rather quickly. And I think yes. in Japan in the 80s, there was this idea of how expensive Japan is. Yeah. And now and then there's also this continuing idea of berlin being cheap and it's yes. just with massive rent increases over the last five ten years that's what we've also seen here in porto then it's um maybe you know you can kind of compare everything else but you definitely in your budget as you think about places to move to look at the real rental prices and also if you plan to work here look at the real wages rental because prices. These, these are, true. you know, <laughs> because these are the things you that, have to balance. Yeah, yeah, that is a big portion of it, isn't it? I mean, you can always go like, I'll become a, a vegetarian or something and eat nothing <laughs> but soups, you know, but right. if you're going to live a regular life with regular food and all that stuff, you've got to add that in and then, you know, find out what kind of amenities you need or conveniences you need and have that added to your Cause you know, we all hear people that want to go to Thailand because somebody told them they can live on $600 a month. And you know, you can live the good life on $600 a month, but what kind of life are you going to live? Because if you're going from one place that you have your comfort and everything, and you're moving to a place where you're, you're kind of sliding back in life, it doesn't seem like, uh, you know, a good thing. I believe if you're going to move right. somewhere else, you need to move to someplace where your life, your, your, way of living is at least the same thing on the same level rather right. than going backwards so exactly if he had to guess the cost of living in berlin like for two people for instance right how much i would say stay per month yeah i would say um probably a good roundabout number I mean, I'm hoping in terms of just rounding up and also including travel, which is, I think, a big ex- expense that people don't think about. And even if you're, you know, in Berlin, you can easily make a flight over to Eastern Europe, which is cheaper than sort of Central or Western Europe in many times. Um, but still, you're going to have to pay for everything that you're yes. doing over there. Um, and of course, if that's the type of place that you want to go to, which is always a question as well. If you want to go to Paris every Paris. weekend, then <laughs> you're going to, as, as we, as we know, that will add up some money. So I would say overall, if you're in the 3000 range, 3000 okay. euros a month in terms of your overall costs, a couple, yes. that's that probably rent, good. Right? That includes rent. That includes, I mean, I think that's kind of an overall view and naturally if you cut back on your nice 
frothy, you know, lattes in the morning yeah. if you cut back on your expensive Just like beer. in the States. If you say, you know, I'm yeah, exactly. Pennies, you know, because exactly. it's easy to get into that mindset, isn't it? When you first move, you go out every day, you go out to, you know, lunch. Oh, it's so cheap. But, you know, and the next thing right. you know, you're spending just as much as you were back home, right? So right. It's and, like, and then you go to the cheap place and you're like, oh, this was great. But, Tomorrow, I want them slightly more expensive place. Yeah, and then exactly. It, <laughs> yeah. Then you, oh, you keep wanting to try new new spots. Oh, there's this new place that opened. And of course, the newer the place, probably the higher the price. The higher so it's the just, price. exactly. <laughs> you know, it just, it just kind of spirals. And you probably don't want to be eating, it, the, as good as the Berlin kebabs are, you probably don't want to be eating one every day. Every so. day, exactly. <laughs> now, <laughs> And I know you can't get good seafood. You cannot get good seafood. You cannot. And I would say that that was a big part of us coming here to Porto was like proximity to sea in terms of just beach life, but also um, eating seafood and getting our sushi. Exactly. You can't here. beat yeah. that. I mean, for me, it's a big part of like, you know, Malta, we thought we were going to be eating out every night with seafood. And it was good. And they had, you know, but the seafood was more expensive than meat. And, mm-hmm. you know, finally I had, the, I, ha- I asked them the first time, like, cause you could get like a small octopus, like a regular one would be like 11 euros. And then they have the Maltese octopus that was like 18 or 19 euros. I'm like, Ooh. what the, f-? you know, you get it from here. <laughs> like, right, right. <laughs> you know, and then we tell us that, oh, Malta doesn't actually keep the seafood. They sell it to Italy. I'm like, well, don't they think people oh, that no. live there want yeah. to eat it? <laughs> yeah, it's like, right, right. That was my big complaint. I'm like, what the f-? So I was more than happy to leave because, you know, it was cheaper because we love seafood. So being in Spain and being down here, oh, I can't you know, even imagine. being on this yeah. side of the coast would be happy <laughs> with the prices. And I remember yeah. some friends visited from Berlin and they were just like, every night they wanted just seafood because they're like, we have to get our fill because you cannot find this, you know, in Berlin for, for any price that's worth paying you know right, so i can understand right. why you love the the seafood there now comparing the 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 cost of living in berlin how much was that compared to how much it was in san francisco oh wow yeah significantly <laughs> cheaper still but that's that's the thing right as like i'm fully 100 percent aware and fully acknowledging that i'm part of this trend but if you're used to paying thousands in rent, I mean, multiple thousands. I mean, I, I was splitting with three people mm-hmm. in, uh, in in San Francisco, so I wasn't at that level. Yeah. But of course, wanting your own place and now you're in a city that's quote unquote cheaper, then if you go from maybe having a one bedroom of three, three and a half thousand in San Francisco, which is insane, right? Yeah. But if you have that and you suddenly are paying 1500 in Berlin then or wherever else, then you're, um, you're like, this is incredible. Yeah. And it is, but it's not necessarily aligned with local salaries and local situation. Exactly. So exactly. we yeah. all kind of get caught in that, right? Because there's also the thing of, do you, do you have the local connections to find those local apartments or do you have to kind of go through the you know, regular. foreigner traps. <laughs> <laughs> and, pay, so. and pay the expat prices. Now, exactly. you said when you, I know we're talking off, uh, offline, you said that you were lucky enough to inherit an apartment. So right. for you, it wasn't as bad as if you had to pay the regular price. It was somebody that was vacating the apartment that was a friend? Exactly. So yeah, it was a uh, connection I made through basically like the person who introduced me to the job then invited me to a picnic with a bunch of people that were going to be working, uh, that were working at the company. So I got to meet all of them. And one of those people was soon to move back to her home country of Canada. And she, and the timeline was like impeccable in terms of the overlap. So I had the, the company there was putting me up in an apartment along with other people, like a bigger place for two months. And so right at the end of that was when she was leaving her flat and it was just the perfect location, perfect yeah. flat, amazing, wow. you know, and you just kind of thank the universe when those things happen because you can't count on it. Right. Yeah. And, um, and so it was very lucky and I was able to basically, she was cutting her contract short. So I was the one to fill it. Yeah. And as a result, I was able to take over the same terms wow. more or less of the apartment. So I was getting an old rent uh, relative to the city and also able to sidestep so much of the, pain of finding an apartment you know and it's very hard it's insane i mean like i think 
the realtors are like rock stars over there. You know, they don't <laughs> yeah. do anything but open the door and people fight for the apartment by themselves. And I was just like, and I remember my husband saying, I am not going to like be doing this. You know, no. this apartment was like, you came in, the bathroom was here and you have to go through the bedroom to get to the kitchen. And it was all like, you know, and they were asking like, you know, 1800, I'm like, what the, f you know? <laughs> like yeah. this is not going to work for us you know and i'm They're, hearing stories from friends saying this is how i got my apartment i had to suck up to the realtor i'm like oh no 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 yeah what i've heard works best although like i said i was very fortunate so you know uh shame on me i guess for not having that direct <laughs> experience of the pain yeah. but um yeah but just being completely frank on that so uh, what i've heard works best is to of course reach out to the landlords or the the listings as soon as they go online that's a, that's a normal thing. Of course, you can look in Facebook groups and things like that. Sometimes people are successful, but once again, that's where they know the expats yeah. are coming from. Yeah. Um, and of course, any local listings, but naturally if it's in a different language, which in that case would be German, exactly. yeah. then you kind of need somebody it's to help you navigate that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So German, German isn't easy. And I can say I didn't pick up you know, too much of it, but I also had some idea that maybe this wouldn't be the last place that we were living uh, yeah. and sort of settling down. So I'll use that as my excuse anyway. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now, before we go any further, we're going to, you know, talk about Porto last, but I wanted you to expand some more on your business, which is called Expat sure. Empire. So please tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I started Expat Empire about two and a half years ago. It was born out of my experience moving to so many different countries and having trouble finding reliable, honest, genuine information. And I'm not talking about like, you know, what I end up finding online is typically, let's say, BuzzFeed style articles for yes. simplicity of getting to yes. the point of like, wow, one, like you're saying, wow, look how cheap Berlin is. Wow. You can buy, uh, they have this thing going where it's like, you can buy a place in Italy for one euro. Yeah, and it's like we'll talk about all, that. We'll, no, we won't mention that magazine that, you know, expounds that, like pounds it on your head with everything, you know. Malta yeah. for 700 euros a month. I'm like, where? <laughs> yeah, yeah, where? I mean, and, you know, you see, like I saw one recently that is in Porto, you can, have, you can buy beer for 50 cents. And then a bunch of people wrote comments to it saying, where like what are you what yeah. are you talking about you know are you even buy, here you, are you... Say you can buy for 65 cents <laughs> okay okay well a full then litter, i'll, tr I'll a trust full you litter of beer. <laughs> <laughs> and and i suppose yeah i suppose you you know that you could buy it at the corner store in the small you know 33 or a whatever 25 milliliter uh milliliter little can mm. or whatever i'm not saying it's like technically impossible but the the real point, the, the takeaway is different <laughs> yeah, from the reality. Exactly. So, you know, um, I'm not saying that they're lying, but I am saying that it doesn't tell you the real truth. So truth for me, story. that was where I was starting with Expat Empire to create this kind of community of people to share their experiences, obviously for me and others to share their own. Uh, so that's through blog posts. It's through my book, Passport to Working in Japan, which I wrote based on the fact that I wanted a book to tell me how to get to Japan and I never found it when I was looking. And then I finally got there. I ended up leaving um, and moving to other places, obviously. But I wanted to bring that experience, that knowledge to other people. So there's that, the Expat Empire podcast and um, some meetup group events in different parts of the world, mainly here in Porto, but obviously kind of uh, slowing down at the moment. Um, but other than that, it's it's individualized personalized consulting services to help people take the next step in their trip whatever that might be even if you're just starting to think about it or you're getting close to moving or you need somebody there on the ground it's using my you know uh, global Resources. network i'm sure that you have one as well yeah, yeah. and uh you know friends and of course business partners as well to be able to help people to make that move but also i really focused on the planning aspect so you know of course learning the best practices of wanting to move abroad planning for how you can get a visa that works for your situation, which you can do in many different routes. I'm sure that, you know, yeah. um, putting together a timeline in terms of planning the exact steps that you need to take before, during, and after your move to be able to make that life change that you want. And then helping you to find an international job as well as figure out what country would be a best fit for you. So those are some of our key services, but it's really trying to uh, help people in the way that's most useful to them in their unique situation. So we're currently offering a free 30 minute consulting call so that we can talk through your plans and figure out how Expat Empire can best help you to achieve them.
So if you're listening to that and you're thinking about making the move, here's an ex, you know, an opportunity to have an expat, an expert and an expat talk yes. to you about their, <laughs> you know, about their moves. And this is not somebody that's coming from like, oh, I've been an expat for like one day. So I'm writing this thing. Right. And I see it all the time. I mean, like on Facebook, for instance, you know, I have a, a course that I do like talking people through the same steps, but it's geared towards Spain only. Right. And you see, I've seen people that haven't even moved to Spain are thinking about it. And they're selling this whole thing, this package for hundreds of dollars of moving to Spain. And it's like, yeah, but I visited while I was on a cruise and we stopped, you know, we stopped in Barcelona for three days. So I could tell you how to get there, you know? And it's just like, well, you know, maybe listen to somebody who's been on the ground, who's had experiences and be willing to pay for it. And that's the way it should be because sometimes you just get what you pay for. Like you said, yes. you know, you can get, you can ask on the internet the same question and you'll get a thousand answers. Are they right. the right answer? <laughs> well, you know, who knows? If Are you they, have time to yeah. be looking around, finding all the information by yourself, then go for it. But if you don't, it's nice to have a service that you provide that talks you and walks you through the steps. Exactly. It's, it's the question of, is this a reliable source? Is this up-to-date information? Um, of course, you can get the blanket thing. You can find the steps to do most of these things online on government websites. I mean, yes. if you if you really want to dig, travel, you know, dig down, yeah. um, go through the whole rabbit hole, then absolutely by all means. But yeah. you know, knowing that people who have actually done it, which is obviously uh, not obviously, unfortunately, not obviously different sometimes from what's written on the website, <laughs> <laughs> right? So it's that insider experience, like you said, the yeah. expert insider experience. So. I think it's that it's synergizing all that information, synthesizing it into exactly what you need to know that's up to date, that's reliable, that you can have a contact person, right? Exactly. That's so important. It's not just a yes. blog yes. writer that exactly. you know, looked at three articles and then and wrote, wrote their, own. their own. Yeah, so, we, we all know the ones that plagiarize your blog posts and all that. Exactly. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully not your images as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They do. <laughs> you know, but what are you going to do? You know? Right. <laughs> so, so now, you know, we've gone through Berlin. How did you get to Porto from Berlin? Yeah, so uh, I, I guess, spoiler alert, I got married <laughs> when I was in Berlin. So ah! my wife and I were making this decision together. Oh, and cool. uh, yeah, now, so was, it, that was, was it a local girl was or was it somebody else? From, but was it another expat? Here's, here's where, I don't know, this is where it kind of blows people's minds. But so I was living in Tokyo. I was living in Japan, doing that whole thing. I moved to Berlin met my wife in Berlin, but she's Japanese. Okay. So, <laughs> so when people hear it, someplace else, completely exactly. different, you know, <laughs> that is so wild. Yeah. It's a and, small and world had, though, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's amazing how you can connect with different people. I mean, for us at first it was as with a lot of people, let's connect and, you know, I can keep up my, my Japanese and she yeah. wanted to, she's very good at German. She's like, she's spent many years learning German and she was doing that but she wanted to get better at her English and, you know, it just went, you know, then, wasn't the right person. It's the right wow, person. So, amazing. Um, yeah. So we actually made this decision together and we were looking, thinking about where's next for us, just in big picture. And the first place that I said was actually Vietnam, which was ah. only because I traveled there. I mean, I, you know, and I just loved it when I visited and I was, I'm so, I love Europe, but I'm also in some way deep in my soul, like, just I have a connection with Asia I guess you could say oh, okay. um, so I thought that and then she's like hmm how about Portugal yeah. <laughs> and I was like yeah that's a good idea too like eating bread every single day you know after a while you just want like I don't know steak or something you just want something different yeah <laughs> right so we so. thought okay um, yeah let's because I had visited Portugal on my Europe trip so I thought yeah I actually loved like I remembered it it stood out in my mind in the midst of 19 city trips sometimes that stuff starts to blend together so yes it felt true. like you and know like cathedral this, whoa <laughs> exactly it's like wait where was that yeah cathedral <laughs> where was that statue yeah. of jesus where was yeah. that museum um but there were parts of porto and lisbon that stuck out to me from that trip so we came to visit in october of 2018 with this idea of it's a week let's spend i think we had three days in porto four days in lisbon something like that and uh, we absolutely loved it. And so we just thought, how can we make it happen that we get here? And we were thinking about which city and what job opportunities there might be in my case. And basically the way that it ended up happening was I was 
caught up in yet another round of layoffs, which is not uncommon in the tech sector. Uh, unfortunately, the, yeah. that's the real it's truth of the situation. It's, it's hard. So I was dealing with that coming into April of 2019, and the job then ended at the end of June. And my wife was wrapping up her program. She was studying to be basically a, a baker. So she was working at a German bakery, which is a three-year program in Germany. Wow. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> probably most other countries don't wow. take their bread so seriously. Um, but yeah, so that was finishing for her, I think, in August. And so it was just like this time where there was a clear break for both of us. It was kind of like either we dig in and we stay here for much longer or we make our move now. And we kind of quickly came to, we were already sort of thinking maybe Berlin's kind of, you know, wrapped up its time for us. And so, yeah, we just started, I started anyway, looking at a lot of different jobs in different countries all over Europe. And the one that worked out, which I'm very glad that it did was here in Porto. And we moved, yeah, last November of 2019. Wow, that's great. Now, you hear people, that was my thing with Porto. I love it. I, I just, I mean, I went to Lisbon and we went to Porto after that. And it was one of those that I think if I wasn't, and I've said it in a blog post, if we weren't living in Valencia, Porto would have been our second choice because I just love the area. I thought it was so much better than Lisbon. You know, there was something about it that just, I don't know. It's one of those places that you get up, whether it's on a plane or train or you drive in there there was just something about it that just wow and i think you love it from first sight or you hate it i guess and but it's hard to find somebody who has hated it and right <laughs> who've been to both places prefer it after visiting before mm -hmm. they visit it's all about lisbon but after visiting it's like right. oh okay but it's just so much better it's cheaper it's it's just everything so yes. i'm a big fan of porto so i was really i was like when you when you told me you're living in porto i'm like oh god i gotta talk to you because yeah it's great. <laughs> how do you find it you've been there now right you've, you've already experienced one winter how is it now yes. that how is it is it better than Berlin weather-wise? Oh yeah it's in my opinion it's significantly better and I think the best way to illustrate that is when I moved to Berlin I got this massive winter jacket and I was wearing it for really I mean literally six months of the year I'm not exaggerating so <laughs> when you go when you go to that and you're also from you know you spent most of your time in California and Texas mm -hmm. in North Carolina and Alabama I mean these are warm places mm -hmm. when you go and also even Tokyo where it does get colder, but it's not, doesn't it's get that cold. Light. And it, it's really hot and sweaty in the summer. Um, when you move from that to Berlin, it's a big shock to the system. So I had to adjust to that and adjust to that lifestyle and the gray and the cold for so long and the rain as well. And then I moved here and while it's not maybe the 300 days of sun per year that you might get in some parts of Southern Portugal. So this is you know Northern Portugal it is significantly better. And I haven't had to wear that big uh, <laughs> that winter big jacket coat. once. You can put no. it in the back of the closet and just forget yes. about it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hoping I only have to whip it out whenever I go you know, visit friends in Berlin, which I <laughs> did, for example, last January. And I was like, that's why I left. That's right? why, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are also close, you know, Porto. I mean, you think of Porto, you think of Port Why? You're close to the Duro Valley. You just, oh my God. I mean, everything about it, it just makes me want to go back. And I can't, you know, there's a direct flight from Valencia to to uh, Porto. So don't be surprised if we come knock, if we come a knocking. No, no, yeah, no. why not? Come like, on over. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so your wife is gonna bake, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> a lot of a lot of people have been asking if she's gonna open a bakery here or what, which isn't her plan yet. But um, but yeah, her her bank. She's done different markets and stuff like that. So her baking That's is in great. demand. <laughs> That's great. Now, how do you find the cost of living compared to? How does it compare to Berlin? Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, it depends, of course, on the lifestyle that you want to live once again, and as well as like the same thing. If you go to the expensive, you know, beer cocktail places, the same expensive hip coffee, coffee shops, then you're actually finding some similar costs to Berlin. But on the other hand, I usually go down for my 65 cent coffee <laughs> that or espresso for after lunch. You know, you can get a pastry for one euro. So the typical life, especially, so I'm living in Matosinhos, which is connected to Porto by Metro, but about 30, 40 minutes, let's say. 
And, um, you know, so it's very well connected, but at the same time, it's more of a beach town vibe. It's a small town. So I really went from San Francisco, Tokyo, Berlin, these massive metropolises to <laughs> a very relaxed yeah. beach life. <laughs> but here, as far as the cost of living is concerned, um, I mean, I can speak to that because I live it every day. It's very cheap here, um, you know, with all of that. The food is fantastic, massive portions, delicious oh, yes. food for five, you know, I mean, there was a place that my friend showed me down the street, which has a lunch special for 375 and it's the wow. huge portion of, yeah. you know, it's like insane. I mean, I did notice the huge portions there for very little, because, you know, you go to places and you think, everybody says this place is cheap, but is it really cheap compared to what the locals are paying or what, you right. know, how they, they, you know, and, I, and there are two places that I think that has held true that I've gone to, Krakow and Porto, that I can yeah. say, you know what, I could live here because the prices are cheap, and it's cheap for everybody. They can go out and have a good life. That's what right. I noticed anyway. So I'm sorry to I, interrupt. Yeah. Go ahead with the, with the no. cost of living you were saying. No, I'm glad you mentioned Krakow because that's an awesome city too, if anyone's yes. interested. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but yeah, the only other part that I would add, which is extremely important is the cost uh, in terms of the cost of living is the rent here. So the rent is going up just like every city that's certainly popular in Europe. There's more and more investment. So on the one hand, great for the economy. Um, you know, they have things like the golden visa here. They mm -hmm. have uh, the non-habitual resident program, which also helps with your tax bill. So there's a number of incentives, which of course, in case of the NHR, I'm taking advantage of okay. as an employee here. But on the other hand, you know, um, make it, well, it's sort of not equal with the locals, let's say. And there's a lot of investment. There's more tourism. There's more places going for Airbnb. And that just decreases the long-term, you know, uh, places that you can rent. And that just causes this supply demand imbalance just causes the prices to go up. So I think that's something that you could potentially watch out for, but if you're coming from the U S then it's, you know, it probably won't be eye popping. You'll probably think it's a great deal. So, you know, just, uh, just putting it out there in case if people are looking at taking on really local jobs, especially if they're coming like, for example, from within Europe, um, which makes it that much easier on the visa side of things, then they should definitely think about, are they going to be able to live the life that they want? Yeah. Or, you know, maybe they need to split with a lot of people, same in San Francisco, yeah, exactly. but it has, I think Portugal, I believe has the low, lowest minimum wage inside of the EU. So, yes. you know, it's, it's a, it's a relatively low cost of living, but still balanced, unfortunately yeah. on the yeah. lower income side as well. Well, for somebody coming from the U.S. for a couple, would you put a number on it? Like we've established that, you know, 3,000 would travel and all that stuff. Would you say Porto was 2,500, 2,000? What would you guesstimate for like a couple? Even yeah. Take out travel. Let's just say, you know, for like living day-to-day -day expenses. Yeah, I think day-to-day -day expenses would probably put you in the 2,000 range. I mean, naturally, once again, the biggest factor being the rent. So if you're living further out uh, and obviously, or in a different city or an older place, there are all those factors. So, you know, it could be in 1500 to 2000 range, I think is come, like probably a, a reasonable couple. estimate um, depending on a number of factors, but you know, you're not going to be able to live a super comfortable life for 500 a month <laughs> or no, even exactly. a thousand. This is, so this is just want to be very Bangkok clear about that. Or Chiang Mai yeah. or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. There's, you know, it's cheap, but it's not that cheap. So right. you've, you've got to figure out there's a middle ground somewhere. If you're getting paid in dollars or pounds or whatever it is, then you're living on easy street. But if you're not, oh, yeah. that's mm -hmm. something you need to figure out into your budget and count on like anywhere from 1500 to 2000 for a couple per right. month to live an okay life without going crazy. I mean, if you're going to go for every meal outside, I know people say like, okay, in, in Asia or in Bangkok, you eat at three meals a day. I see those on international house hunters. They have like, even if it, if it has a stove, it has a burner this big, which is not going to work for me because we like to eat right. at home. So if you're right. planning on doing that, then you certainly want to add that to your um, cost of living. And especially if you're going to get paid in the salary that the locals do, it's going to be next to impossible. The same as here. It just doesn't right. work that way. So you need to have something portable. To, Absolutely. To I think that's a great you. strategy, to be honest. Yeah. That's good to know. So when you left Berlin and you came to Porto, 
did you say now that you've been here and you love it do you have any plans are you a little more settled down or are you still thinking you know where's the next place <laughs> it's a good it's a good question because based on my past uh not only what i've spoken about today but just in my past way of thinking there was a always in the back of my mind this what's next what's next and i've maybe it's you know getting older maybe it's a change of lifestyle maybe it's this that or the other and obviously you never know what the future holds but i would say my uh, or our and now i can say our current yeah, yeah. plan yeah. is to <laughs> to be here you know um at least for the next, I would say like the closest goal for me in terms of a timeline <clears throat> is to work toward getting my dual citizenship here, which takes five years from starting your residence. So um, I still have obviously some years toward that that I have to work to work on. And then also after you apply, of course, it takes time. So I think that's sort of the next big kind of overall overarching goal in terms of our situation, but we do love living here. And normally I'm in a place for a year and after that year, then it starts to be like, mm, I'm seeing my, I'm seeing yeah. similar stuff going on. But I would also say, okay, okay, I just finished the first year. So it may be early to say, but I don't feel that way right now, which is great. I mean, for that's me, that's exactly, a step no, forward. It's true. Right? <laughs> I felt the same way. I was, I mean, we tried, you know, it was like Budapest for a month. You know, we tried Krakow. We, we tried, you know, every place thinking Berlin, you know, let's go, Johannesburg, you know, all these places just to see. And right. then after a while, you know, but once we got to Valencia, it was like, ah, you know, and yes. I'm like, we're yeah. okay with going and visiting places, but not thinking of moving there anymore. And my family right. is like, oh, thank God. We yeah, didn't know yeah. what to tell people because you're talking about Nigeria. So they're like, we didn't know what to tell people. They're like, we're telling them my sister's homeless. You know? Right. Because Basically, to them, it was like, yeah. they just don't understand. It's like, what do you mean you're traveling around and you're, you, you want to move here? And then it's like, yeah, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, you know, and so right. now they're it's like, hard well, to explain. finally. You yeah. know? And, and I would also just say, I mean, in general to your listeners, it's, it's not the most specific advice, but every place has its pros and cons. America included, Japan included, yes. Spain yes. included, yes. you know, here in Portugal as well. So I think it's good to find the place that's the right fit for you, but, um, you know, give it some time because it, in my opinion, it takes about a year to get settled yes, somewhere. Yes. So now I feel pretty settled here, even yes. in the midst of this situation. But on top of that, so give yourself some time, but they have that sort of thing of the saying of the grass is always greener. Yes. And I think it's fair to think about as well, what are you going to miss? Because yes. you have yes. to think about it's the positives, true. not just the things that are frustrating. Yeah. I mean, don't, don't think you're going to find Nirvana in everywhere, anywhere. No. You know, anywhere. They, just, no. You just have to find the one that fits the most. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I guess it's sort of like how can maybe think about it um, in terms of, how can I take a step up in my overall average quality of life or whatever that means to you? I love that and, step you know, up. <laughs> up. <right. laughs> it's, yeah, it is, it's an average, right? There's ups and downs, but it's yes. sort of like if you go from a zero to 10 scale, if you go from a six to a seven, this is a massive improvement yes. and you should be grateful for that. Exactly. And if you go from six to six, then maybe you have to think about, okay, what are, what are those things that are the negatives? And is that at least is decreased okay? in terms of the pain that I experience going through it, right? Exactly. That's fantastic. Now, I want to thank you so much, David, for coming on to the show. But before we wrap up, can you please let people know how they can find your website and the podcast and uh, anything else you want to drop on us? Yeah, absolutely. So once again, it's Expat Empire. That's expatempire.com. And you can go there to download my top 10 tips for moving abroad ebook. So that's basically my last seven years of learnings in a uh, you know, 19 page ebook. So I hope that people will enjoy that. And of course, you can schedule your free 30 minute consulting call as well to discuss with me uh, your plans, your thoughts about moving abroad, your goals and dreams. And then I'll see how Expert Empire can help you to achieve them. So I'm happy to have those conversations. Hope you enjoy the content on the site and would love to see you there. Oh, great. Thank you so much, David, once again for coming on. And for anybody listening or watching, I will, of course, have his information on the blog post that goes with this on Next Bite of Life. And please, if you're enjoying the show, subscribe to the channel. Um, 
subscribe on Spotify. Just go ahead and stalk me everywhere. I mean, except for totally. real life. But, and, give a, and give a good review. We know yeah. how much those matter, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we appreciate it. <laughs> thank you again. I mean, this has been wonderful. So thank you, everyone. And I'll see you on the next episode of the next bite of life. I love that, David, you're taking your next bite of life, which is what led me to name it that because that's what we're doing. We're taking our next oh, bite yeah. of life. So, you know, join us. It's really good. And the bites are great too. So. <laughs> Very delicious. <laughs> lot, thank you. Everyone. We'll see you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>